So to start off with, uh, with our title page, um, what you guys realize here is we've got a title block that's preloaded for us. If you go to your sheets and you go to new sheet, there's only one there. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a, a, a Mount SAC template. We don't have that. So um, we're gonna create one for us. Okay, so what I want you to do is um, select your title block family and I want that to be very clear to you because title blocks are families, just like anything else. So you can double click that and it opens up the family editor. It, it's basically just, it opens up the family. So, or the family file. Let me clear out some of the stuff in my background here. I'll put that up in the top left corner and I'll work primarily on this right here. All right, so this is our, this is our um, title block family. So there, there are just a few small things that I want you guys to modify. Um, I, I, and, and really, this is more of an exercise just to show you how to create labels and how to modify a pre-existing family that is almost purely annotative, meaning it's just lines and words. Um, so first and foremost, let's change out the Autodesk uh, logo for the Mount SAC logo. So you, it's pretty easy to find a Mount SAC logo. We probably have some on the drives somewhere, but just search for Mount SAC and go to images, and you can just pull this one right here. Okay, so what, I, what I'll need you to do is save that file somewhere on a drive that you can access. So save image as, we're gonna to go to, um, well, I'll just drop mine in my folder. Actually, you know what, I'll put it in our, in our uh, class folder. So let's go to 147, 247. I'll put it in resources. So this is gonna be um, Mount SAC logo. All right. So, um, I forget if you can actually. Yeah, you can. Look at that, you can just drag and drop. It's been a while since I've done it, but yeah. So um, you can just drag and drop it into place, or if you um, feel the need to insert it through the proper formal channel channels, not proper channels, but formal channels, you can go to the Insert tab, go to Insert Image, and you can navigate to your image location there. Any questions about that so far? Simple enough, right? I don't really need to pause. Um, the other thing I want you to do is um, uh, you can eliminate all this stuff here. Uh, basically, something that's kind of a typical cover sheet sort of thing to have in a set of drawings is to have all of the people who worked on that set of drawings, including the owner who um, owns the project, listed and all their information here. So that's why that's there. So it, it would be the owner, the architect, and all the consultants of the architect that worked on the drawing set is what you would put there. But we don't have those here. We just have us. So... Um, a title sheet usually has a, a couple of different components. It, it frequently has a sheet index. Um, it may have some general notes, a vicinity map, um, and it definitely has in very, very bold letters the title of the project, usually the address, and what phase the project is in. So um, <clears throat> in order to kind of break this apart, I'm going to just uh, create a line. Let's just create a line. Um, yeah, you can use the title blocks line there if you'd like. Um, and I'm just going to draw a line across the middle of my page. And then I'm going to do another one from the middle of that line up to the top. So um, you might ask yourself what this is. Um, for me, I'm going to set mine up so that I have all of my sort of notations and administrative stuff at the bottom. So that's my sheet index, vicinity map, area map, um, that kind of stuff. Um, and then I'm going to put a, an image of the building in the top left, which is a very common practice. And you notice in the drawing sets that we have that the cover page has an image of the building. And then I'm going to put uh, the title information and owner information in the top right. Okay, so um, anyway, let's get started with that. So um, the image of the building is going to be a view of the building that's a live view that will always update. So I'm going to use that off of my model. So I'll do that in my actual project. But in order to create the label for the project itself, you have to go to create and create label. Okay, so um, what this is going to do, once you click in the space here, um, is it's going to uh, query the, um, the, the project parameters 
or, ra or sorry, not the project parameters, the global parameters for what you would see in a typical project. So um, there are things like the sheet name and number, which are labels that we've already got placed in the bottom right-hand corner of the project. Um, but there are also things like project name and project number. Um, sh the, the project issue date, you can put contact information in here. Um, so what we're going to do is the project name. Um, and for this label, we're going to leave it just as project name. Okay. Um, now notice it comes in, in in very small text. We have to change what text that is. A label, um, when you create it, is nothing more than, than text that has a particular filled in field attached to it, a parameter attached to it. And then outside of that, it just behaves like any old text. So um, here we can change it to half inch text. Um, we can stretch the text box. We can change the alignment to be right hand side aligned. Um, and in fact, um, half inch, uh, I want to change it to five eighths actually. So, um, oh wow, there already is a five eighths. Okay, five eighths it is. Um, but I kind of wanted to show you how to create a new text. So let's do that. Um, actually, mm, no, we'll leave it at five eighths for now. I'll do the text stuff in a, in a different video. Okay, so um, this is your uh, project name. I'd like you to also put in a uh, text field for uh, a label for, uh, I don't know if this has phase. You could do project status. Okay, let's do, pro yeah, project status. We'll hit okay. And... Uh, We'll switch that to half inch, and we'll put that one below the project, and it's going to be right hand justified. Oh, one more thing. Um, we also need to put in a label for the project address or address. Um, so let's go to project address. Boom. And then hit OK. So this one's also going to be half inch. Um, project status I'll put down here because I'll probably wind up putting more information in there or something like that. Um, so that's how you create, or oh, sorry, there's one more really important thing about this, right? So a title block family needs to be controlled very, very carefully in terms of how the file is saved. So if I click on load into project right now, it's going to override all of my other title blocks on all sheets. And I'll show you it real quick. Um, what that would do. So here's my uh, here's my sheet, and I go here and I say um, actually, this might I might have to like close my file and reopen it. But anyway, so load into project. I say overwrite, and that's what it does. So um, right now, every single sheet that's in my project is this family. So if I do that, then I get this on every single sheet. So I don't want to do that. Um, what I want to do is save this family as a new family. So I'm going to save mine, and because I want you all to go through this process, I'm going to save mine in my own personal drive and force you all to do it yourself. So um, I'm going to save family, and I'm going to say, uh, I'll just put it under, uh, where's, yeah, 147, there we go. So I'm going to call this one um, E13042 um, cover sheet horizontal. Options, they should be fine right there. There. So now this thing takes the form of a different family than the one that I originally opened. So I can load this in now, and uh, well, it'll ask me to place one, but I don't need to place it, right? I can just hit escape. It's already loaded into the project now. So when I uh, create a new sheet, you'll see that there are two in there. Okay, so I'm going to um, create a cover sheet. And then uh, likewise, if I select that title block, now I have both of those title blocks in the project browser there on the left. Any questions? So also, I want to point out here um, just real quick that you see that those labels have taken on the properties that we've already programmed into our project. The project name is called Residence. We'll clarify that later. 
Um, it, the project address is Arcadia, California, and the current status is schematic. You got a question, Daniel? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, I think Patrick may have asked it earlier, but you can't make your own custom title block. You have to select a pre-made family and then change it. Uh, well, no, you could create a new one from scratch. Um, you can go to new um, title block, and then you start off with like something like this and hit open, and then you just go ahead and, and have at it. You know, create all the labels and everything you want on your own. Cool. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, so take a moment to prepare that title block, um, get it loaded into your... Um, project. Oh, uh, one thing I also notice here is that my sheet was um, named something or numbered something a little funny. So I'm actually going to change this to uh, G001. Okay. G001 is a general sheet. Um, architectural sets, assuming you have landscape and civil and other um, consultant disciplines are generally broken out into like general sheets, which are like your title sheet, general notes, stuff like that. Then, then the order for most typical architectural sets are um, uh, civil and then landscape, and then your architectural site plans, floor plans, so on and so forth, and then you know some other consultants after that. So that's why we have G sheets and we have A sheets. But it might be a T sheet, like title sheet or something like that. 